Hi, Jane. Hi, Yale. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And um, to those who are watching, I just want to introduce you and how I came to hear about you. Um, I met someone and I told him about my event and that I'm looking for amazing female speakers and he said that you were the best speaker he's ever seen. So I <laughs> thought, can you please introduce me? And then um, we spoke and I loved you immediately and then I'm so happy that you were able to make the dates because you weren't sure at some point. And that's how it all came about. And then when we started talking and you told me what are the subjects that you can talk about, then I thought that's just perfect. <laughs> uh, so, you know, if you can just introduce yourself quickly and then we'll dive into some Q&A. Okay, well, my name's Jane, as uh, <laughs> I think most people will know by now. I'm actually South African by birth and upbringing. And um, my background really is was initially business. Uh, I was in advertising, journalism, public relations, advertising, all the communication-related things. I love communication as a passion. Um, and I became a psychologist, got my first doctorate in psychology um, around about when I was 30. And uh, it to me, it is absolutely fascinating. People are absolutely fascinating. Um, I always think it's quite funny. People are always posting pictures of dogs and cats and things on Facebook. I think, can you imagine if I posted random pictures of people on Facebook going, oh, I love people. Look at these cool people. Um, and what I found is that psychology is not just something that belongs in a consulting room. Psychology is something that belongs in every single aspect of life, including business. Um, so I still do a huge amount of work with businesses. I do a huge amount of work with individuals. Um, I love watching people and companies create enormous, massive success. Uh, I love helping people in big turnaround projects. Um, so I just like it's such a thrill out of watching people do the things they never thought were possible. Amazing. And you actually have three doctorate degrees. Yes. I think so I always first... get the last one wrong, so I'm waiting to hear what it is. <laughs> so the first one, psychology. Uh, then it dawned on me that people, uh, what they were suppressing emotionally and mentally, they would often manifest physically. So I thought, well, this is really interesting. So I ended up getting a doctorate in natural medicine. And then I have a passion for all things spiritual, um, and I am quite a spiritual person. So I thought, well, I can deal with people physically, emotionally, and mentally. May as well do spiritually as well. So my third doctorate's in metaphysics, which, of course, is spiritual philosophy. So. Oh, wow. So I did get it wrong in a few of my videos. So anyone that's watched the other videos where I said quantum physics, it's not. It's metaphysics, <laughs> <laughs> which to me is all the same. It's all Chinese. <laughs> wow, amazing. Well, that's incredible. Um, so you are going to be speaking in at, at our event, Million Dollar Woman Live, and you're going to be exploring, well, not exploring, but presenting to us the idea of the psychology of wealth. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested, one, what is the psychology of wealth and how did you discover the psychology of wealth? Well, I was brought up, as so many people are, in a house where there wasn't a whole lot of money going around. There was always financial tension and pressure in the house. Um, and I used to look at how hard my parents worked and how little they seemed to ever have to show for it. And as I grew up, I realized how hard I was working with so little to show for it and how hard other people were working. And yet there were some people who had loads and loads of money and they didn't seem to be working more hours or differently and I thought what is the difference what is the difference between the haves and the have nots um, because it's not something as simple as one lot are hard workers and one lot are lazy it's there's something else and I realized that we are so bad at understanding how money works what it actually is how it works how we should interact with it how we should value the different things that we do where the money is in our particular industries um, and so it's become a bit of a passion um, of mine to re-empower people back with the knowledge and the information that they should have got at school and never did so that's really what it's about is is understanding what what it is where it comes from and how you get your hands on your your piece of the, the wealth that is out there for everybody. Brilliant. And how did you learn it? Where did you learn it? Um, 
all through practical experience and just through fascination. So it's either my own experience or other people. Um, but I would analyze my own reaction to things and decisions that I was making. And I think where psychologically, where am I making this decision from? Why am I acting in this particular way? Why am I thinking like that? And so I can honestly say that um, it's everything that I've learned with, with uh, money is from the school of hard knocks and understanding myself what... Um, what, what the process is. I always say to people, I will never ever teach you to do something I won't do myself. And that's usually because the things I'm teaching you are things I have done myself. Right. So money is one of them. I've, uh, I've had money and I have not had money. And it's a lot more fun to have money than to not have money. <laughs> I totally agree. I love having money. I love earning money and I love spending money. <laughs> um, <laughs> So when you, now that you know the secret, so to speak, um, are you able to always make money? Are you able to make the amounts that you want? Um, not, not always as quickly as I would like, perhaps, and not always the way that I first think it can be made. Um, but what I've discovered is that there's always a way to make money good money in a way that you're delivering real quality value stuff and that actually making money is a game that's all it actually is it's a game that you play and some people just know the rules better than other people and once you know the rules it's actually huge fun to play the game so I'm one of those people who goes okay well you know I need you know hundred thousand pounds to buy this or do this or whatever and it becomes a, a, a bit of a challenge like a personal challenge how am I going to play this game to make this much in this length of time and do it with really positive effects. So it's it's fun. And I think that's the biggest thing with money. For most people, it's a terrifying thing. It causes them so much stress. And I think actually it's, it's fun. It's just a game. We've given it a personality that it doesn't have. Um, it's not a big, fat, scary thing that's against you. It's just something that you can play with and manipulate. It's out there. Um, so learn how to work with it. I'm really interested in how you promote your talks as well because, um, you know, definitely since I started promoting a Million Dollar Woman Live, which is um, a lot to do with uh, women becoming wealthy and achieving greatly, I find that there's a lot of resistance in some people. Um, definitely when you come to speak about money and, you know, how do you make more of it and how do you... Everything to do, everything to do with money, um, you know, some people find even offensive sometimes. I always I find it very interesting as a psychologist in the twenty first century. Um, I always use this as an example. If you if you're doing relationship counselling, especially it comes out. Um, most people's biggest concerns tend to centre around um, sex and money. And in the twenty first century, most people go into the most incredible detail about their sex lives, but don't ask them how much they earn. It's like the last <laughs> no-go area. And it's fascinating. I think that's how bad our relationship is with money. But I always think that we've been given this negative attitude towards money or this fear of money. Um, and we, we think that people judge us by the amount of money that we have and our ability to make money and the things that we own. And to a certain extent, we have become judges of people through those very things. But I don't think nearly as much as people... Um, imagine that to be the case and I, I think that uh, we are brought up to not understand money properly I do actually think it is a, a, an intentional thing because it makes us more easily to manipulate you know who is going to do the basic labor um, sort of uh, seven pounds whatever it is an hour when you actually understand how money works and of course society runs on those sort of mundane jobs being done so if you empower people too much you take away the workforce um mm. so i've become a bit of a, a mission i think you can you can do whatever job you like but understand why you're doing it why you're being paid what you're being paid and how you can change that so i think to a certain extent it's intentional that we're given this misunderstanding of money um but also i think that people are scared that you're going to tell them they're going to have to work hard for their money Mm -hmm. And most people love the idea of money just sort of falling into their laps. And I think it's not like that. You know, people talk about the difference between working hard and working smart. And, you know, I've got to learn how to work smart and not hard. And all these, you know, 12 or 14 hour days, are 
ridiculous hats on how you become wealthy. Everybody tells me it's about working smart. And I think actually it's about working smart and working hard, especially when you're first starting the process of making money. There's nothing that's going to make it flow into your bank account better than just sheer hard work at the beginning. And, and people are resistant to that. Mm. They still like the fairy tale that it's just going to appear from nowhere. Right. Well, I remember my coach telling me when I, I realized what I really love doing and I don't mind doing a lot of it. Um, you know, she said that's what easy money is about. It's exactly. about, you know, you're still working, putting in the hours and doing a lot of work. And, you know, seriously, I sometimes, from the moment I get up, I'm on my phone till the moment I go to sleep, which is a bit sad sometimes. But um, I do enjoy it and I love it. And, yeah, so whatever money I'm making, it doesn't matter how many hours I've worked, even if I didn't have a day off, sometimes I feel happy because I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So it is. You've discovered the game of doing it. Okay. It's fun. So, when it's fun, it doesn't matter. I mean, I work very long hours and I travel a lot, and um, but I just absolutely love it. I absolutely love the work that I do and that's exactly the secret to it. And it's interesting because I always say people make a decision through love or fear. And you never make a right decision when you're making the decision through fear. And I think it applies to money and it applies to the career that you do. It applies to everything that we do. When you are offered a job or offered a contract or turned down a job or turned down an opportunity, I always say to people, look at why you're making that decision. Are you making that decision because of a fear of something or because of a love of something? If you're offered something and you're going, yes, I want to do it. I love it. I love the idea of it. It excites me it'll be the right decision. If you're making a decision because you think, I'm scared of not taking this money that's on the table in case it's the only money that I'm ever going to earn, it's not the right decision. So I always say just stop and analyze why you're making the decisions that you're making. So uh, really your beautiful. coach is exactly right. You know, <laughs> when you make that decision because you love something, then it's not money, is it? It's not hard work, is it? Mm, love that. That's a really good advice. Um, I'm looking at some more questions. So, um, I would love to hear, can you share some of the successes that your clients has had once they've learned what you teach about the psychology of it all? Um, it's interesting because I work with such a variety of people from individuals and small businesses all the way through to big sort of international and public listed companies. So the types of successes I see kind of on quite a bit of a sliding scale. I mean, I've just been having a conversation, for example, with one of my um, private personal one-to-one -one, uh, clients who uh, is selling personal training. And uh, she was going, oh, I, you know, I just can't seem to shift it. All the personal trainers in the gym where I work, they've all got sort of four or five clients. and It's a real slog. And we literally sat and went, right, how do we do this? How do we create the excitement around people coming to you for their personal training so that handing over the money to pay for their sessions is just one of the things they do. It's not the deciding factor. And it's interesting. We had a great, uh, literally, hour and a half conversation and the next day, she signed up 27 clients. Um, so 27 you, Oh, wow. It, it's about how you approach things and how you, um, you know, you, you see things. I have people going, oh, I could never do that. Uh, but you talk them through it and you get to the point that they, they work out what they can do, where they are comfortable doing, um, and, and get them to implement that strategy. Once again, doing it from a place of the stuff that they love doing and the value they love adding um, and just see the, the money coming in. I mean, for the clients that I work with on a, on a you know, consistent basis and a lot of my programs are six months long, in that period of six months, it's amazing how people will literally double their income or triple their income or completely change their lifestyle. Uh, and probably one of the things I enjoy the most with that type of thing is getting people who have decided to go into business from themselves for themselves, kind of walking them up the money ladder until they get to the point where they can step away from their salary and successfully know that they can create their own income that they need uh, and do it consistently. So that's very satisfying. And then with bigger companies, I mean, uh, probably one of the biggest things I see at the moment is companies who are making knee-jerk reactions because of the economy, uh, you know, and they're making people redundant and they cost-cutting left, right and centre um, because they've gone into panic mode. And I think stop, stop, let's look at your business and let's work out 
where money can better be spent and what decisions should be made to uh, boost the income of your company, not reduce the expenses of your company. I'm always saying to people, there's a choice. You can try and save yourself out of debt or you can earn yourself out of debt. Mm. And I promise you that earning yourself out of debt is a lot easier than saving yourself out of debt. Oh, wow. It just doesn't work. You know, I think the amount of time people spend cutting coupons you know, pay money off coupons out of magazines and stuff like that. I think just spend that time earning decent money. Mm. It's a much better investment of your time and efforts and energies. So that's I think true. that's the thing is, is, of course, you need to be cautious with money when things are tight. But sometimes it's not about cutting corners on what you buy. It's about cutting corners on where you're skimping yourself and your ability to make money. That's amazing advice. And what are you going to teach us specifically at Million Dollar Woman Live? Well, here's the thing, in the time that I've got, which I've got so much stuff that I would love to be able to share with people, my aim is to show people how our relationship with money works and how money actually works and where we have got a subconsciously flawed reaction towards money, um, the type of decisions that we make that are actively that's actively pushing money out of our lives every single day and people say to me oh not me i don't actively push money out of my money every day that'd be ridiculous uh but i will prove to everybody that they wow. do it every day and that goes for all of us i know that i have to watch that i don't do it myself so right. i guarantee you there's not a single person who's going to come to our event and walk away without thinking well i have been doing that probably every day so um and if, if i can show you where you push money out of your life all the time i could also start showing you the ways in which you can reverse that trend and start bringing the money into your life and uh, understanding why it's happening that sounds amazing <laughs> i'm a great believer in the fact that knowledge is power if you understand why things are happening then you're equipped to make a decision on whether that's something you want to carry on happening or mm. not. So I think, well, let me give you all the knowledge that I can give you so that people can walk out of there after that one day and make some real solid changes that they can see pretty instant results from. That would be amazing. That would be incredible. Um, I have some questions from Facebook. A, yeah. a few people asked me to ask some questions. So... Um, they're more philosophical questions. Um, but, you know, I'm really excited to watch you live. I can't wait for the event. And um, I hope anyone that's watching that uh, it helped you make a decision and choose for yourself. Uh, because really, you know, going to events like this or buying high-end programs or whatever it is that you do to grow um, personally and in business, um, it always takes a decision to, to say yes to yourself, to a better life, uh, to your dreams even so I really hope that anyone that's watching um, you know kind of thinking actually you know it's not materialistic to want more money um, there's a bigger impact that I can make in people's lives if I have more money and you know I want to learn from the likes of Jane Jane is incredible and you know I'm going to to come and buy my ticket well, let me tell you why I'm excited about talking at this event um, is that I'm a, I'm a believer in the fact that there are the talkers and there are the doers. And there's a lot of people who talk about how they want to improve their lives and they want to increase their income and all these things. And I think, well, talk is cheap. At the end of the day, it's the people who actually have got the faith to invest in themselves that are going to... Um, really make a success of things and why I love speaking at events like this is every single person sitting in those chairs has enough faith in themselves and enough hunger and drive and ambition to have made that investment so I always know that I'm speaking to uh, people who are ready people who are ready for change and who are ready to kind of grab opportunities so um, do you know what I think I think we're going to be very uh, lucky with the people that we have at our event yeah so, it's very looking. true no I, I agree even as a business coach i see my clients who are ready to invest money in themselves they come in a completely you know with a completely different attitude and the results that they get in are just so fast you know what honestly if you're not prepared to invest in yourself who else is going to be prepared to invest in you that's what it comes down to mm, yes Amen. <laughs> uh, so I've got some interesting questions. Um, what was the toughest point in her in your journey, and how did you overcome it? Oh, I'm sure there's um, quite a few. I've had a, I've had a few. Um, 
and and I think each point is one where you literally I've had to start literally from scratch. I mean, it was things like um, leaving a marriage and having to start all over again as a single person, um, then getting remarried and having to start again from that perspective, um, leaving one whole industry and moving into a completely different profession and starting all over again, uh, leaving one country and moving into a whole different country and having to start all over again with no reputation, uh, no anything. Um, and, at the times, it's always daunting. I think these things are always a little bit scary when you do them, but it's actually so liberating. It's such an incredible opportunity to prove. I mean, I'm always saying to people, it doesn't matter where you start. Just start where you are with what you've got in your current circumstances. Don't wait for the right time. The right time is right now. Um, but there was, there have been times where um, people can see that I've, I've been successful and so it, it is a little bit intimidating. So what's been really rewarding for me in those occasions of starting all over again is I'm putting into play the things that I teach other people and I'm proving to myself that they work. Um, so therefore when I'm teaching other people again, it's with that complete confidence that if they do what I did, they can achieve the results that I've achieved in whatever their industry is. Brilliant. Um, so this relates to what you just said. So if you were starting again from scratch, it's really funny that this question come up, but if you were starting again from scratch, is there anything that you would do differently? Ah, uh, you are always learning and you're always growing. And I think there's never been a time where I've done everything exactly right. Um, but I think that when you make the mistakes, you learn a huge amount from them. So a lot of the stuff that I teach people is because I've fallen into the traps and it makes it less painful to have fallen into the traps if I can stop other people from falling into those traps as well. You may as well learn from my mistakes. Um, so I, I'm always looking for new ways of doing things and different approaches to things. And um, I think people always need to take their own personal circumstances into account. Um, and I always try to do that with the people that I work with, even when it's in a workshop environment. What are your circumstances? And what would work most effectively for you in your real life? Mm. Um, because that's one of the things that I'm always trying to put into everything that I do. I know your real life still has to run. I know your family has to run. I know your current job has to run that's putting the food on the table. I understand real life is happening, especially with us women. We've got a lot of on our plates all the time um, so when we're trying to do something more it truly is a stretch uh, and it's got to be worth your while so if you've got the hunger to make that stretch and you genuinely want more how do we as women do that effectively without compromising any of the other parts of our lives too much mm. um, so I think that's the biggest thing is is understanding the balance all the time and when you are making compromises uh, in different areas so for example if you are spending less time with your kids or your partner or uh, whatever I always think talk to them it's amazing how uh, you know I would sit down with my kids when I was a single parent of my little kids and say listen I'm going to have to work some weekends you know some of my clients could only see me on the weekends and there's nobody else to spend time with kids but when I said to them right you know on the if I'm working on a Saturday you get to choose what we do on the Sunday you know that Sunday completely belongs to you that follows the Saturdays that you've allowed to completely belong to me um then they're really excited about it because they know that they they can choose where they're going for lunch or what they're doing or you know what movie we're going to go and see or and I just think get get people involved tell them why you know communication is the solver of so many problems that we don't need to have okay so it sounds like you don't have no regrets <laughs> uh, do you know what regrets are such a waste of energy aren't they so I true. think they have learnings <laughs> but there's no regrets you know I'm there's been some uh, trying times that I certainly wouldn't want to repeat. Mm. But if I had gone through them, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. Mm, very true. And um, someone asked, are you happy? Are you fulfilled? Definitely. Definitely happy. Definitely fulfilled. Absolutely love, love, love what I do. I love the people that I meet. I love the things that I learn. Um, I definitely know that I'm living the life I was put on earth to live and that's a very liberating feeling and I think a lot of people don't ever find the thing that pushes them forward you know they lie on their deathbed one day going gosh if only you know yeah. oh I, I would have loved to and I think that's such a sad 
a sad thing to, you know, that, that yeah. to me is a version of hell. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that a lot of um, what I do and what gives me great joy is moving people in the direction that really feels right for them, that really belongs to them. Because as you said right at the beginning of our conversation, the money that you make there, you're going to do well because it is your passion. You're putting everything into it. Um, and it just, the wealth that you create isn't just financial wealth, it's life wealth. It's amazing. So it's exciting. I love what I do. I'm very, very lucky. Very blessed indeed. Um, and then someone asked, when, other didn't, when others didn't believe in you and you doubted your own ability to succeed, and this is assuming that this happened to you, it's really funny, some of the questions that people posted, um, they're already assuming that this actually occurred, but I'm guessing in this in this instance, I'm sure, because it happens to everybody. Um, so when you doubted your own ability to succeed, what kept you going? I'm stubborn. I'm a really stubborn person. And there's <laughs> nothing like the words, you can't, that just mm. wakes something up inside of me going, really, you can't? And just because <laughs> you think you can't, don't decide I can't do it. Um, so I do tend to be quite stubborn. Uh, you know, one of the, the phrases that has stuck in my mind was when I left my ex-husband and he said to me, you will be nothing without me. I remember thinking, really? <laughs> <laughs> so there is that little stubborn part of me. But, you know, there are so many people out there trying to tell us what we can and we can't do and what we're capable of and we're not capable of. Who are they to make that decision for us? Mm. Um, so I think it's about you deciding that you want something badly enough. And then... To not be intimidated by the size of your dream. Um, you know, it's just a case of doing the best you can do today. Just do today. It's a little bit like Alcoholics Anonymous. Just do today yeah. and do it as well as you can. And if you fall over today, mm -hmm. try again tomorrow. And that's really how you climb any ladder to success in anything, I think. That's brilliant. Um, someone asked what five actionable pieces of advice would you give about attracting and returning customers which is probably quite a lot but do you have one piece of actionable piece of advice that you would give about attracting and i think attracting and returning customers is there are two different things in a way aren't they um well i can tell you some things that come straight to mind okay um, first is the people buy people so always be genuine, uh, always believe in your product or your service or yourself. Um, never compete on price. It's just a fool's game. Nobody wins at the end of the day because you end up compromising on quality. Everybody's stressed. Um, I always say don't, don't compete on price. Compete for val on value for money. Mm -hmm. um, and also make sure that you are providing what your customer wants. Uh, you know, I see a lot of people going, oh, I believe in this, or I think that, and this is important. Um, and that's great, but sometimes they create an environment where first they've got to sell the concept to a customer, and then they have to sell that they've created or decided on or the product or service that fulfills that need. And mm -hmm. I think you're making a yeah. rod for your own back. Find your passion. Find the thing that you you want to do then research go and talk to people find out what the customer needs because your business has got to make your customers happy mm. not just you happy yes um you know it's it, it's about it's about giving people the resources that you have available to them that are going to benefit them the most brilliant well thank you so so much for your time uh I right. definitely, I can't wait to, to hear all these amazing things and how, how am I rejecting money in my life? How can I attract more money in my life? And just hearing your money story, which I know you're going to be sharing with us as well. Um, and yeah, I, I look forward to meeting you in person and thank you again. It's an absolute pleasure. I'm really looking forward to being there. Thanks. Thank you.